So the example says a market research firm used a sample of individuals to rate the purchase potential of a particular product before and after the individual saw a new TV commercial about the product, right? So here in this example, um, we have a, a group of people and um, we're trying to assess um, or basically rate their purchase potential to see if they would buy a product before seeing a commercial on that product or if they would buy the product after seeing the commercial of the of the product, right? So the purchase potential ratings were based on a zero to 10 scale with higher values indicating a higher purchase um, potential. And then the null hypothesis, which is our HO, stated that the mean rating after would be less than or equal to the mean rating before. So basically, this line would help us develop our HO and HA. Rejection of this hypothesis would show that the commercial improved the mean value, right? And um, improved the mean purchase rating, sorry. And then, um, we're asked to use alpha or assume alpha is 0 0.05 and the following data to test the hypothesis and comment and comment on the commercial, right? If that television commercial is, is good or not. So now the data that is being described here, I've included a link here, right, to the data. And I would also include this link on the YouTube, um, on the YouTube page of this video, right? So you can either copy the link here or just click on it on the YouTube page, um, whatever you are comfortable with doing. Uh, and then I already started typing the code a little bit so that it will be fast once we start um, our discussion. Uh, so you, if you've installed line number five, please skip it. You don't need to install it again. Just start from line number six, right? So basically I'm going to load the date um load the library and then let me load my data and then okay so now i've loaded my data you can see we have eight observations with three variables and when i click on it you can see it. so these are each of the individuals that make up our sample right remember the sample says or the question says sample of individuals. So we have eight individuals in total, and this is their rating um, after watching the, the commercial, right? This is what they rate, that they would buy the product, right? And then before watching the commercial, this is, this is their ratings here, right? So please take note of that. So this one just helps us to see the error inside the output environment. So let's do um let's see if we could summarize the data and basically just see like what the mean is and all those different things. So we use the function summary and then we just call the data. So we don't really pay attention to the first column, right? Because it's just the count of the individuals, but when you look at the second column, which is after watching the, the commercial, will they purchase the product? On average, we have a rating of six, right? And remember the question says, with higher values indicating a higher purchase potential. So on a scale of six, right? That means it's, it's more likely, right? That these individuals will, will purchase the product after watching the TV commercial. And then when you look at before, you have a mean of, should I say 5.4, right? Which is a little bit um, above the middle line of, of 5.0, all right? So, um, but you can see how 
I think it's okay if we say that the averages are, are pretty close, right? Um, but here, if you look at the median of after purchase is six, and the median of before is five, it's it's literally on the boundary, right? So um, that's that for how we summarize the data, and then we could also visualize the data using a histogram. You basically see what kind of distribution does the does the data follow. So we do this. First, I'm going to create a new column called difference because since this is a match sample, we need to take the difference between the after and the before, All right? So the head would basically just show us um, our data with the new column that we have created. And then the hist is basically the histogram. Right, so now you can see the data. Right, you can see we have a new column called difference, which is basically the um uh six minus five is one, six minus four is two, and so on and so forth. Right, and you can see that that's different from when we first ran it. We did not have that fourth column there, but now we have the fourth column there. Now, line number eighteen is to create the histogram, and you can see our histogram. It's a little bit skewed, right? So you could see the frequency as well as the distribution of the of the histogram. So now let us compute the test statistics. But before we do that, I have some, some points I wanna just put up here, right? And I think I've mentioned it in the previous video, but if you haven't watched that, I'm just gonna repeat it here. So we're using the t-test function because this follows um, a t-distribution. The, the population standard deviation is unknown, right? So we use the t-distribution for that. And we use the, on R, we use the t.test the function to help us run the t-statistics, right? And then also, because we're dealing with match samples we need to set our um paired which is like a statement inside the function we need to set it to true right because we're dealing with match samples all right so now i have that there so let's run the let's run the code for the test now. So the first thing is we would call the, the after purchase data, and then we call the before purchase, and then our mu, right? Oh, okay, so forgive me, I forgot something. I did not state what our null and alternate hypothesis will be, right? So I'm gonna come back here, and I'll basically state it here. I got too excited, which happens. So mu d is mu d would be the difference in let's just say the difference in in ratings. Then H O would be mu D less than or equal to zero. And then H A is mu D. So mu D means the 
the population mean difference, right, between the two um, ratings, which was after and before, would be greater than zero. All right, so now we have that taken care of. So mu here is the hypothesized um, population mean, which in our case, it's zero, right? And then remember we said the pair, you just put that as true. And then the alternative, right? So here's something we need to take note of. Um, because this is greater than, which is the right tail, right? Our alternative here would be greater, right? That's basically how you would put it. I'll give you guys some, uh, some hint on that in a minute. So, and then our confidence level, right? It's given us 0 0.05, which is basically 95%. So you just want to write 0 0.95 here. All right, so let me give you that hint or no. Yeah, let me give you that hint here and then I, we can we can come back. So I'm just gonna write another, mm, no, maybe I should put it up here. I'll put another note. Right, note three. Um when when performing a two-sided. So two-sided hypothesis test, right? Basically, if you have if you have that, right, not equal to in your alternative hypothesis, right? Um set the alternative to two dot sided. All right, please be careful. This is a period. It's not a comma or anything. It's a period. I've seen people make make mistakes, right? An arrow will give you an error. And then the next note would be, I am just going to copy all of this so I don't have to type it again. So when performing... Um, a lower tail, right? Basically, your alternative would be less than. So set the alternative to less, right? And then note five. So when performing a right tail, right? So that is greater. Set the alternative to greater, which is what we have done in line number 32, right? So... <clears throat> Just some different um, points I want you all to um, take note of. And then we use the least bracket test to, to call our, our results, right? So let's run line number 32. All right, so it worked. And this is our, um, so here you can see it says it's a per T test. It lets you know where we're getting the data from, which is after and before. You could see the T statistics here. You could see the degree of freedom, which is seven, and that's basically N minus one. So eight observations is our sample size, which is um, N. So eight minus one is seven. And you could see the P value as well. And then you can see the confidence interval, right? It goes from negative 0.24 all the way to infinity. And you can see the mean difference, which is basically um, the mean you, you get from line number 20, 21, right? So if you do mean bracket data dollar difference, you would get this 0 0.625, right? So let me let me just show, let me show you all. So it doesn't look like I'm just manufacturing it or something. So if I run that one, all right, so you can see I get 0 0.625 there. So that's the mean, right? So let's write out I just like to write out the results as well as my interpretation. Um, So 
here we say do not reject, right, H O as the P value is greater than 0 0.05, right? You can see that 0 0.11 is greater than 0 0.05, right? So in conclusion, or to finish up our interpretation, we can say we cannot conclude that seeing the commercial, sorry, commercial improves the mean potential purchase, right? So basically when we say do not reject HO, what we're saying is that this here is true and this is false, right? That's what, that's basically what we're saying, right? Um, so please take note of that. I hope this is helpful and you've learned how to use um, our, our programming to do um, a math sample analysis when the population standard deviation is unknown. Thank you for watching. Um, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also leave any comments with any questions you would want us to um, answer and we'll do our best to um, respond to your um, comments. Thank you.